A-level chemistry is not an easy A-level. It's definitely one of my more challenging A-levels, but it's not impossible to do well in the subject. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Jackery and I'm a student studying in London. And in this video, I want to just talk about some of the things I did to help make chemistry more manageable and get an A-star. And hopefully the things in this video can help you achieve as good a grade as you possibly can in chemistry. Just for reference, I did biology, chemistry, maths and psychology, and I managed to get an A-star in each of the subjects. So if you go on my channel, you should see a video on each of those subjects talking about how I got my A star. However, if you don't do any of those subjects, then you should still check out my video on how I got five A stars. That video just goes through some general tips on how to do well on A levels and the advice in that video isn't as subject specific as the one in this video. As usual, timestamps will be in the description below as well as some useful links to resources and the textbooks that I use. Now before we start, I should say that if you're someone who's doing A level chemistry and you're struggling and finding it difficult, that's all right. Typically, a lot of people with any A-level when they first start, they don't do as well as they thought they would. I personally came into A-levels as a grade 9 in chemistry, and even then, I really did struggle. In the first few exams, I just couldn't get the mark, and despite all the different things I tried, it just wasn't working out for me at the start. But as the year went on, I started to develop certain strategies and noticed certain ways of working that just helped me achieve the results that I did. So just don't be disheartened and don't give up if you're at the start of year 12, and if you're still not finding chemistry completely manageable. Even then, I feel like the things I talk about in this video should hopefully help you get onto the right path of doing as well as you can. Tip number one is to use a revision method known as blurting. Now, blurting is something that I found out through Unjaded Jade. I'll leave a link to her video in the description below. And it's also a method that my biology teacher really pushed me to use in biology. Now, using the method, I realized that it is applicable in multiple subjects, including chemistry. Now, essentially what blurting is, is when you get a plain piece of paper and you just pick a chapter or a topic from your textbook and you just write everything you know about that chapter on that piece of paper and after you've done that you then open up the textbook you then go through the content and you make any corrections based on anything you've gotten wrong or anything you've missed out now I feel like blurting is a really good method to kind of just force you to go through an entire topic and just regurgitate everything you know about it and then mark it personally I would always get like a green pen and then go through the blur and just make any corrections that I got wrong and what this meant was that I could either easily see what parts of the chapter I was weakest at. So if I was to ever revisit the chapter and try and attempt it again, I would most likely focus on the areas that I got wrong rather than the entire chapter. To do well at A level and especially at chemistry, it's all about efficiency and it's all about using every minute of your revision as effectively as possible. Now there's no point of you going through an entire chapter if only part of it is what you're weakest at. And I feel like blurting really lets you highlight the weaknesses and thus work on it a lot better. Now tip number two, two is just going to be about how I approach new content. Now I talked about this in my biology video and the th the approach to chemistry is very similar, mainly because biology and chemistry are very similar subjects. Obviously, they're both scientific based subjects. But essentially what I do is I'd always pay attention in class or at least try my best to. And then when I got home, I would just watch a quick five to 10 minute video on YouTube about the content that I went through. Now, the good thing about YouTube is it's very easy to find example specific videos. And that way, the things you're taking in are relevant to your A levels. Now, I found videos were a good way to just fill in any gaps that I might have after walking away from lesson, which was actually quite common. I'd very rarely walk away from lesson understanding everything. Another resource that I'd use is called SnapProvise. Now, SnapProvise essentially take the entire syllabus and split it up into multiple bite-sized videos that you can watch and that are really easy to digest. Now, unfortunately, SnapProvise isn't free, but if you are considering buying it, I do recommend you just check out their YouTube channel, which I'll link below as well, where they just upload a few free videos so that you can get an idea of how their teaching style is and, and how they go about showing you the content. Now after I've done that and I feel like I've understood the content so essentially the way I judge that is if I can explain it to myself logically and it all makes sense to me. So after I've understood it I'll then move on to making Anki flashcards. Now Anki was a large part of most of my revision and so making the Anki flashcards was very important. I'd essentially take all the content from the textbook split it up into multiple flashcards and then put it all into Anki. After that is the important active 
pretty cool part of revision. This is where I'd actually go through my Anki flashcards and also do other things on the side such as blurting which is what I mentioned at the start. This essentially lets me memorize the content and I feel like it's the most effective way to get content to stick into your head. For me reading over notes, reading over the textbook isn't really effective but this active recall method really lets me ingrain it into my head. Now after I do that I then move on to exam practice. Now the whole point of all this active recall and watching videos and understanding it is so that on the exam you can actually get the mark and the only way you can really find that out is by doing exam practice on whatever topic you're going over. I found that this was a really good way for me to see how well I knew the content and see whether or not I could get the marks. After all of that I would then kind of reassess and see which areas of the topic I'd particularly be struggling on and the next time I wanted to visit that chapter instead of going through everything I'd focus on that point that I was struggling with. This is really useful useful especially if you're going through a topic and maybe 90% of it makes sense but only 10% of it doesn't it wouldn't make sense to go through everything instead just focusing on that 10% would be way more effective and way more efficient now tip number three is to focus on the keywords phrasing and specificity of the mark scheme a level chemistry has really specific mark schemes very similar to biology a lot of the times you could understand the content it could all make sense when you write it down in your exam you end up not getting any of the marks mainly because you've missed out one keyword or you weren't maybe specific enough on a certain point or the phrasing is a bit off it sounds really annoying but the reality is that's how a level chemistry can be a good way to kind of overcome this is to expose yourself to as many exam questions as you can and focus on the wording that the mark scheme uses for their answers pick up on that wording and try to incorporate it into your own revision what I do is if there was a specific keyword that I found a lot in the mark scheme I'd make sure that that keyword was a part of my Anki flashcards. Now whether you use notes, whether you use flashcards, this can still apply to you. If you see a keyword that keeps coming up, a specific phrase that keeps coming up, or even a certain level of specificity that you need, always make sure it's included in your revision material. So when you're going through it, you make sure that you're internalizing the correct answer that would get you the mark in the exam, rather than a more generic answer that might still be correct, but won't get you the marks. Now in chemistry, there are certain points where a mark team is also very important, especially Especially when you look at chapters like the flame test chapters where there's a lot of involvement of naming colors of compounds and whatnot sometimes different resources vary in how they describe certain colors for example some mark schemes might just give you a mark for saying red whereas other mark schemes will give you a mark for saying crimson red some give you a mark for saying brick red the list goes on so make sure that you're using your own exam board to answer questions and pick up on those type of specific keywords I knew when I was doing flame tests when I I was first going through it I accidentally used a resource which wasn't specific to Edexcel which was my exam board and whenever I was doing practice questions I'd then end up losing small marks here and there because of how I described the colors but then eventually I realized that the mark scenes were looking for specific colors and specific words to describe them and eventually I incorporated that into my flashcards and was able to get them right the next tip is quite crucial and that's to make sure that you're self-assessing and marking all the work that you do I know a lot of people when they do practice questions they will simply have the mark seem open and as they're answering it after they're done they'd look at the mark team and kind of mentally mark their answer however one thing that I'd always do is I'd always get a green pen and after I finished answering a question I'd look at the mark team and make any corrections physically on my paper the reason I did this was I found that when it came to exams if there was ever a similar question like the ones I did in my practice on the actual exam then I'd remember any mistakes I made a lot better when I actually wrote down my corrections and that way it allowed me to kind of remember the marks scheme a bit better and ensure that I was including all the relevant points and increasing the likelihood of me getting the marks. I feel whenever I wouldn't physically correct my answers and I saw a similar question in the exam I'd kick myself because I just couldn't remember the mark scheme properly or even what answers or corrections I had to make. Definitely make sure you're assessing all your work and just put in a little bit of extra effort to write down your correction so that you kind of remember it more through muscle memory and just having seen it on paper rather than just on the mark scheme. Tip number six is to look out for reoccurring questions when you're doing your exam practice. Especially in chemistry they like to ask you a lot of definition questions 
questions. So if I had to think of one from the top of my head, a question that I'd see quite commonly was something like define the standard enthalpy change of neutralization. Now, as you do more exam practice and as you expose yourself to a lot more practice questions, you'll notice these type of reoccurring questions. And for the most part, you'll find that every time that question comes up, the mark scheme is more often than not the exact same as the last time it came up. And eventually when you start realizing that and you start noticing these reoccurring questions, instead of having to think about the answer when you see it in an exam, you can simply memorize the mark scheme and recall what was written there. I would do this a lot and it would just make the exams a little less stressful and give me some certainty in knowing that I've completely gotten all the marks in that certain question. A lot of the time I'd even turn the reoccurring questions into Anki flashcards just so I could remember them even better. This is something that I don't think a lot of people know about but I can say for certainty that a lot of the A star students I know who did a lot of exam practice would very easily pick up on those reoccurring questions and guarantee themselves the marks. Now the next tip is to be prepared for some of the more challenging chapters. Now the main chapter that I have in mind when I say this is organic chemistry and I feel like anyone who's done A level chemistry will tell you how much of a pain organic can be. It's just so filled with content and it's so broad there's so much memorization all these reaction pathways that it just naturally becomes a lot difficult to handle and so the bit of advice I really want to give you is once your teacher starts going to organic going through organic chemistry just put in that little bit more effort to pay more attention because organic chemistry is quite interdependent on itself a lot of the content within organic chemistry builds on content within organic chemistry if that makes sense something you learn at the start of the chapter might come in again in the middle of the chapter so if you don't pay attention throughout as you reach the middle you're going to have to be playing catch up and that's genuinely the last thing you want to be doing a lot of organic chemistry like i said involves reaction pathways and memorizing the color of compounds which isn't too bad because it meant that it was really easy for me to make anki flashcards but that's not to say that the content isn't broad in fact i'll put on the screen right now an example of some of the kind of reaction pathway diagrams you have to learn because a lot of the time in questions you're given a reaction you're given the start and the product and you have to determine how you can get from a to b using all the different reaction pathways you know the next chapter i think you should really focus on is the maths chapters or the calculations chapter now chemistry does have a good percentage of maths within it and yes the maths isn't too difficult especially relative to a level maths but I feel like a lot of people neglect it and thus end up losing a lot of easy marks. The thing with calculations in chemistry is it's so repetitive. Once you've done one calculation for maybe one chapter, you realize that it's just copy and paste every time and the method doesn't change. But a lot of people don't go through that initial phase of understanding the calculation so they can't end up repeating it. Sometimes calculation questions can even be upwards of four to five marks and it really isn't difficult as long as you make time to understand it and understand how to do the maths you end up gaining a lot of marks in the exam in questions that a lot of people just can't answer that's not to say the calculations don't get challenging i definitely feel like the calculations in year one were relatively straightforward but in year two of a levels it got a lot more challenging and there were some calculations that I had to dedicate some more time to. I know for me buffer calculations were a lot more difficult and because a lot of the buffer questions were five marks or so I definitely made sure I understood it properly so when they did come up eventually I was able to answer them quite easily and guarantee myself the marks. The next tip is to use past exam papers wisely. One thing I really don't recommend for A-level students is to do entire exam papers near the start of their course now that's not to say that you shouldn't do exam practice what I would personally do is instead of touching the exam papers I would do topic specific exam style questions now a good website for this is physics and math tutor they take all the exam questions and split up into separate topics so that way you can find a bunch of questions just solely on the topic you're going through the reason I kind of tell students not to use entire exam papers is a lot of the time especially at the start of year 12 the exam papers will include content that you just haven't covered and when you go through the paper you're eventually going to stumble across a question you can't answer not because you haven't revised properly but because you simply haven't gone through the content and there's literally no way you can get the answer right I feel like a large reason exam papers are so useful is that they can give you an idea of how your timings are and how well you are at kind of switching between content 
content and being able to derive the right answer and for that reason I feel like you're better off leaving them until you've gone through all the content and you know it to a certain degree so that you get a more accurate representation of how you're doing now an alternative is you could do AS papers AS papers typically have less content than A level papers but the scenario still stands that you should make sure you've gone through all the content the paper covers before you attempt it. Now, if you go to your exam website, they will tell you what each exam paper covers. So for example, one paper might cover topics one to five. And if you've gone through those topics, then by all means, have a go at the exam papers when you feel ready. Now, the final tip is to understand the interlinking between chapters. Now, at least for Edexcel Chemistry, the way it kind of worked was year two was a direct continuation of year one. A lot of the chapters in my year one book were like kinetics one and then you open up the year two book and you see a chapter kinetics two and that's kind of when I realized that the content in year two is just an add-on to the, the content in year one now the reason this is important is I found that in book two they explained the content in such a way that they were assuming you were already strong with the year one content and that's when I realized that if you're not strong with the year one content then the year two content will just be more and more work piled up whereas if you're confident with the year one content year two content feels a lot more easy and a lot more manageable because you're just adding on to pre-existing knowledge so make sure you pay attention in year one it's going to be difficult but it's like an investment into year two it's going to make year two so much more easier and with that we have reached the end of the video so if you found the video useful you enjoyed it then leave a like subscribe and let me know what you thought in the comments below this video is quite long but there still may have been something that i missed out or you still have a question so if that's the case ask below and i'll get back to you as soon as possible thank you so much if you've made it this far it's been crazy to see the channel grow and i do read everyone's comments and it means a lot i hope the channel can continue to grow and hopefully I can just continue to push out content the way I am right now. That's been all from me and goodbye.